Hello, brothers and sisters. Thank you guys for joining. Um, hopefully from here on out, um, my videos sound way better. Um, I brought my music equipment. Um, uh, I do, uh, I make music too. So I have, I just decided like, I should be using all this stuff so I can make my video sound better. So, um, all right. So thank you guys for joining. So today's video is going to be quick. I just, I want to do some videos that are going to be fast, but I was going to have good information. And basically it's just going to be introductory information, stuff you could think about and look up yourself and dig deeper. So today's video is just going to be um, a tidbit from the next video I will be doing. And hopefully it's going to be sh um, not too long. I want to keep it potent with information very informational uh, but not uh long because i know a lot of us don't have time to sit through like our videos i know so um although long videos you will reap what you saw you're gonna learn a lot from all those long videos i've i've like been to three hour videos i love doing that i, I don't have a problem because when i work i have my headphones i'm working and just just learning, learning, learning. So, so today's today's topic is gonna be uh, the early church fathers and leaders throughout church history that denied the apocrypha, denied the um, yeah the apocrypha of the Bible. So, you can, the apocrypha or the Deutero canon, to say it nicer. So, um, first on the list. And for foremost, for me, um, is Jesus and the, and the apostles never used it or quoted from it. And for me, that's case, case closed. For me, it's like, I, I don't really see in my scripture because of that. And I really don't care for them. But I would say that I will say this before anything. Um, I don't mind it. You know, I don't mind having the apocrypha. Actually, I've been wanting to. I read them online, but actually I want to own a physical copy. So I've been looking, um, I've been looking up to have, have a copies of the whole Apocrypha, but I would not want it. Well, I guess I wouldn't mind an old Bible. I wouldn't mind one of these old Bibles here with it in, in it, you know, it's historical. I love historical things. Um, and it would be awesome to have an old one. So I might be on the lookout for one of those. I like collecting old books. So I don't mind it. I think it's inter interesting as church history and some of them are historical. And um, yeah, I like it from that angle, but I don't see it as scripture. So, okay, sorry, let me not waste too much time. So, okay, I I'm just gonna mention the names. I can't go deep into it. That'll be for another video. I wouldn't be able to go deep into every one of these persons, so. Here we go. Jerome. Everyone knows who he is. If you're Catholic, you know who he is. And, you know, there's arguments. But he denied it. You know, you could hear his quotes. You could, I mean, read his quotes. And he didn't, he didn't see it as canon. Um, so it's Jerome. It's uh, Melito of Sardis. Philo. Origen. Cyril of Jerusalem. The Council of Laodicea. Raphinus of Achalia which was Jerome's friend, Hilary of Poitiers, Gregory of uh, Nazianzus, Amphiph Amphiphilicus of Iconium. These names are uh, Greek, so they're kind of funny. Uh, Epiphanes, Bishop of Salamis, Josephus, the Jewish historian, uh, the Jewish Babylonian Talmud, doesn't have the... the, the um, the Apocrypha. Um, then we have Cardinal Gaetano, Hugo de San Victoria, Ricardo de San Victoria, Nicolao de, de Nira, Naira, um, Dionisio uh, Cartusiano, Hugo Cardinal, and um, Garciano. And I know there's more. I just wanted to do a quick list. I was just looking up real quick. Trying to find uh, the best list I could find, you know, and um, I know I'm missing a lot. 
I'm missing a lot here that I'll cover on the video. But there was a Catholic popes that um, denied it as well. So um, knowing this information, uh, there's there, throughout down history, when you look back at history, there's a lot of people who have denied it. They didn't consider it the canons. I've, excuse me. <clears throat> and for good reason, they didn't consider it the canon. And I think those, we should really look into that why, not just um, ignore those facts. And a lot of the facts, when you search them, it leads you to good information. And us Protestants, our Bibles, it leads us uh, why we took it out of the Bible or it didn't include it because it was just not inspired. And there's really good reasoning for that. Good historical reason. And it's all spiritual because of the contents of some of those books. There's historical errors. Um, they're not inspired. And um, yeah, and I'll be covering a lot. I'll be covering a lot on this subject. You know how they were found in other books. Uh, the older, the older um, codexes, they were in there. Um, and uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls had some of them, and etc. And all that, all that information is very important. Histor the historical information based on that is just fascinating, and it's very telling. And um, I will be going through all of those things. And um, it's good to pay attention to every detail because, you know, someone could say an argument and they leave some details out that are key. And um, as a truth searcher, you know, we have to look at every detail. We have to uh, we have to take into consideration a lot of the things, not just uh, blanket over certain things. And wherever the truth leads, it leads. And um my assessment when I the stuff I read about early church history is that it just it's not clean and cut as people want it to be. It doesn't uh, it doesn't sit nicely wrapped around. Uh, it doesn't uh, it's not a nice wrapply, uh, wrapped package, you know, it's not a, uh, it's not ideal. And uh, it's messier than we think. And uh, that's that's what I could say, you know. So God bless you guys and uh, look those people up. And um, I will be giving more deeper information on that. So, right. God bless you guys. Take care.